fêter que tu le veuilles ou non Salope, t'as un terrain visionary quality of our moment you can understand in a lot of ways I think there's clearly something happening spiritually if you will but it's sort of hard to say exactly what that is but it's very clear that something is happening to media technology and culture and consciousness and you know there's some pretty interesting things out there there's kind of some disturbing things out there it's a it's a very weird process as we weave ourselves ever tighter into networks is one thing that's happening. So uh, just informationally, we're becoming more and more tied in with each, with each other, more and more like group minds, more and more like uh, beehives. And there's some very repressive and spooky paranoid aspects of that, and there's some very rich human uh, communal aspects uh, to that. But that's definitely one thing that's kind of changing. But even more, a more obvious expression of this kind of visionary quality is just uh, in computer graphics and what's happening inside of online worlds, the fact that there are millions of people around the world who devote a large part of their free time and their eros, their energy, their imagination, in some sense their life force, to playing multiplayer online video games. I mean, those things are really deep. They're really rich. There's a lot of stuff that goes on there. There's a lot of anthropology there. Uh, it's very attractive. It's addictive, arguably, or can be, certainly, uh, for some. That's really peculiar that these, you know, virtual worlds are gaining so many people who on some level play with it or identify. Yes, on some level it's just a game, but it's also only our iteration right now. It's not what we're going to see in five years, or we're going to see in ten years, or we're going to see in twenty years. So that's a very strong way in which our, as we become more mediated, media has the ability to conjure up imaginal worlds, has the ability to conjure up total fabrications, conjure up simulations, things that didn't happen video that looks so real but it's completely fabricated on a computer whether or not we see it as fiction or fact it's coming through the same mechanism and so that fundamental sense of how we know fiction from fact how we know what is the creation of a machine versus something that was made in reality breaks down as we become more mediated as we spend more and more of our lives whatever on the internet or looking at things or even just getting information and I'm sure some of you don't spend very much time there you know more power to you but a lot of people do a lot of people do we have a responsibility to dream you know wake up and dream wake up and dream dream intentionally be aware that the the, the crafting of reality through intention and desire and ethics, a sense of the good of what would be good for you, for the planet, for people, is has a real active potential in our environment. So it's not, it, it can't just be a, a passive process. And it's hard to figure out what that means. Uh, it really is hard to think to figure out what that means. I think that that's, that's one of the things that um, I'm feeling right now is I'm, I'm uh, feeling sort of sober about the challenges that are involved in really pursuing and staying true to dreams. You know, we hear a lot of rhetoric about, oh, there's a transformation of consciousness, or maybe 2012 is coming, and there's going to be this whole shift point and all that stuff. And, you know, okay, you know, that if, 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 you, if that's really caused you as a story to organize what's happening, more power to you. But the reality is, is that people in the West, particularly, you know, inside the sphere of history that really created our current situation, there's been people who thought it was the end of the world throughout the whole goddamn thing, going back to Jesus Christ and before, you know, time, time of Jesus, they thought that was it. You know, second, uh, second coming, it's coming within the t lifetimes of people now hearing. But that didn't, clearly didn't really happen. And you go, go through and you find the stuff over and over again. And I don't want to say that to say that ideas like 2012, this idea that, that the, the end of the long count of the Mayan calendar signifies some uh, uh, planetary transformation of untold you know, dimensions and intensity, whether it's 
the end of the collapse of our, our you know, advanced civilization, so-called advanced civilization, or whether it's some kind of consciousness shift or both or whatever. But that idea that there's a particular date that attracts that is something that, you, that recurs over and over again without, with, throughout uh, Western history. So I don't want to denigrate it. I think that it's a it's a legitimate response to the fact that things are always changing, and that somewhere you know, somewhere uh, every place feels like the end of the world. You know, if you're in Georgia right now, it kind of feels like the end of the world. And you can go all the way back through human history and go, ah, for those guys, they were really feeling the end of the world there. And sometimes there's an urge to like make your moment seem more special than it necessarily is. And sometimes there's an urge to like make your moment seem more special than it necessarily is. Uh, that there's there's something as the ones we want to be the generation. Yeah, okay, it's going to be fucked, but we're the generation that goes through the end of the world, or or this con you know transformation of consciousness, or some massive thing. And maybe that's what happens, but maybe it looks kind of like where we are, but just weirder, uh, a mixture of of ordinary humanity and extraordinary things that are going down, a mixture of dreaming uh, and awakening. But I, I want to sort of, again, emphasize that that apocalyptic sensibility, uh, what, what bothers me sometimes about um, something like 2012 or the way that people, is it, as I've said, you know, there really is this like, legitimate apocalyptic scenario that we're in the midst of. I mean, it, for any way you look at it, it's a, it's a good metaphor for what's going on at the very least. So it's not like I, I don't recognize that draw but I think there's a tendency to literalize what it means as a way to uh, gain some sense of control over it because it's so terrifying. Uh, and that's what I mean where you can see this oh, time and time again where there's a certain date and people gather around it and it, they start agreeing and it and it just seems so real and then it you know, doesn't quite happen uh, the way that it might, but that it's rooted in something incredibly real. It's rooted in something very basic and what it's rooted in, this apocalyptic sensibility, is not necessarily the actual end of the world, but in the end of your world, the way that you construct reality. Every man and woman's death is the, the last judgment. The idea being that at some point, your world is going to go away. Your world is going to collapse. You know, if you read like Tibetan, uh, about Tibetan practices of deep meditation, it's like, you know, what does the Dalai Lama do? What does the Dalai Lama do when he's meditating? I mean, he's the Dalai Lama, what's he gonna do? Well, what he does is he goes through a kind of, um, basically a simulation of death, where he takes the model of what happens in dying, the collapse of the different elements into one another, the shifts in the color, the, the loss of certain as you know, fundamental aspects of your body. So you're sitting there, to the degree you're, you're still awake, and you're just losing these things that have always been a part of you gone what you know so this process and so he'll he'll run through this with the idea that if you keep running through this time and time again when it actually happens you won't freak out because that's the whole like tibetan thing is like just don't freak out if you can if you cannot freak out you can get through all the karmic loops that they say will drive us back into uh you know, material reality. What we have in our nervous systems, in our consciousness, in our awareness of our own death, the uh, we already have the end of the world. We have the end of our world. And when you look at like apocalyptic visionary experiences, and we can talk about the, you know, prophets back in Judea 2,000 years ago, or we can talk about, you know, whatever, whatever couple thousand people's experience last night here where you, you, it starts to get really big, and you maybe you, you start to feel the pain of the world, or you see the ferocity of the transformations, or you mourn the death of species, or you exult in this coming ability of imagination and machines to create a new culture, when the dance floor becomes this kind of portal into this other sort of dimension that whose implications can't coexist entirely with the way we see reality normally. Those are, or can be, you know, apocalyptic experiences. If you read through experience reports of psychedelics, you come again and again to these kinds of massive transformations, um, prophetic experiences.